We got ourselves some crabs. It's finally December here in the Florida Keys and it's cold Oof. and we're gonna get in the water this morning. Please tell me my wetsuit is dry. My wetsuit's got holes in it. It's all ripped apart. Oh boy. There's a leaf stuck in my windshield wiper. It's not working. Y'all know I don't do well with the cold. Right now I'm driving from Key Largo down to Tavernier and we're gonna go be going out with Killshot Ed. Ed made me a custom spear gun. He made me the South Florida Fishing Channel Killshot gun, which has slayed so many fish. It's in the trunk right now. So we got Killshot Ed and we also got my buddy Carson who, but this is his hat right here. Sea Ruts Marine. If you need a mobile marine mechanic in the upper keys, Carson will come to your house, he'll do a hundred service hour if your boat's on a trailer or if it's on a lift, he'll get the job done. He also, he'll do anything. I'll link both of their contacts in the video description below if you want a spear gun or you need some boat work done. The flies are loving the sand chum. Nice morning, fresh chum breeze in the air. <laughs> and, and the flies don't have it wrong. It smells as bad as it looks. Untied and unzip. Oh man, we ready to hit the road. our final destination. We're at 130 feet of water. Carson and I are gonna get in. We got Carson's putting the float line out already. Ed's right in the boat on this drift. Time to get wet. Oh. Oh load, oh load, oh load. We're starting the day trying to get a wahoo. And the way we're doing it is two of us are in the water drifting while one person is running the boat, basically just driving circles around us. We got flashers down, and just hoping a kingfish or a wahoo swims right up to us. There's a lot of life, a lot of bait. That's a good sign. I spot some fish deeper down and I swim down about 50 feet. A lot of spade fish, some jack. You hear my watch giving me the 50 foot warning. I could shoot some of these fish, but I'm looking for something big. There's tons of yellowtail all around me and they're pretty big. They're like 14, 16 inches. Good eating size all day long, but I'm looking for something big and pass them up, which is a recurring theme that's gonna start haunting me later in this video. Yeah, maybe. We go anchor in some more shallow water. We'll try for Wahoo again later this video. We got Carson dropping some chum balls. We didn't see any Wahoo out in the deep water, so we came in a little shallower. We're in like 40, 50 feet now. We're gonna chum for about 20 minutes. We're anchored up. We're gonna hop in and maybe get a grouper. All right. Let's go. I already spot a shark swimming around down there. One of the key things to do when you're grouper spearfishing is to chum for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Don't jump in before that. Take the time to chum. Dropping chum balls that go all the way down to the bottom. Earlier I said that we were in 40 to 50 feet. When I get to the bottom, I definitely felt like I was deeper than that. Mm, mm, mm. 
after checking my watch, I'm actually sitting down at 60 feet. And this mangrove snapper in front of me, he was like a solid 18, 20 inch. He was a big boy, but I decided to pass up on him because I want a big grouper. That shark gets y'all excited? <laughs> I know it got me excited. I also saw these three amber jacks swimming together. Thought about shooting them, but I'm gonna let the amber jacks pass. And then these three mangrove snappers swam up to me. They don't look that big on video, but those are like 18 inches. And I decided to pass them up. I should have shot one because then I would have found out what was wrong with my gun before it mattered. Looks like Carson shot one of those juicy snappers. I'm chilling on the bottom, check my watch. It reads that I'm at 60 feet and there are these big blue parrot fish all around me. And they're pretty cool, so I just take a moment to chill with them. But we're gonna move spots to look for a grouper. Oh, <laughs> you're good. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Woo, it's getting kind of chilly down there. We're moving spots once again. And I'm a little upset with myself because I've had so many opportunities to shoot such nice mangrove snappers, big ones. But I want a big grouper or something massive so bad that I've been passing up on the good eating fish. But right now, Ed and Carson are in the water. I'm driving the boat, we're doing a drift. We'll do a couple drifts with them in the water and then I'm gonna get in the water. And I'm freezing cold, taking a moment to heat up, but I'm confident that I will catch dinner today. I'm not giving up. What you got there? Oh, he almost got away. <laughs> Damn, that's a good one. Not bad. Solid. Is that another lobster? Oh, yeah. Slammed up. All right, my turn to get in the water. I see this barracuda and I threw my flasher down at it and it follows my flasher. And I know that Ed loves eating barracuda, so I let him go after it and have some fun. Now, fortunately, barracudas have extremely thick skulls and Ed's shot just slightly ricocheted off the side of the skull, I believe. But that's okay because Ed spots a big old dog snapper and he's about to get his comeback. Woohoo! And man, that is a big dog snapper. Oh, oh, oh yeah! Hey, where's your baby dog snapper at? <laughs> I was checking out this shark sleeping under a rock when I spot a little lobster looking at me. You see him right there? <laughs> Ooh, delicious little lobster. So I asked Carson to throw me a oh. snare. <laughs> Just a lonely little lobster. <laughs> As I'm grunting around, trying to attract a grouper, I spot this beautiful spider crab. Spider crab. He's just walking there and I'm just like, oh, hello there. Those are good eating. Yeah. <laughs> 
Before we head back to deeper water to try for Oahu again, Ed pulls out this little uh, underwater motor thing. I'm not sure what to call it, but I tried it out. It was a lot of fun. Made me feel like a little kid again. Ed's got a bunch of cool toys like this at his shop in Isla Mirada if you ever want to check them out. Just go on Google and search kill shot spear guns and you'll find his shop. The reason we put these big floats out when we're hunting bigger fish is they're attached to our guns. So if you shoot a big wahoo or a big kingfish, they'll be attached to the float and you won't lose your gear. All right. All right good luck. What I'm doing here is bumping the teaser flashers up and down to make them sparkle. And kingfish and wahoo will swim right up to it when they see all this commotion. Right here's a kingfish that swam by and I'm chasing him. I chase him all the way down to 50 feet, but I realize I'm probably gonna run out of air just chasing him, so call it off. Okay, and this is where things go a little bad for me. Look at all these beautiful trigger fish. Big targets, easy shots. Boom, how did I miss that? I would never normally miss a shot like that. If we watch the slow motion, my shaft goes up and does like a twirl. Carson over here has no problem sniping them. <laughs> Whacked them. Now I try to shoot another trigger. Ooh. How did I miss that? In the slow motion, you see my shaft go up and then take a hard right. A nice macro literally swims to the tip of my gun. And I miss. Ooh. My shaft shot high and took a left, WTF. That macro literally swam right up to my gun. At this point, I'm highly suspicious something is wrong with my shaft. It's gotta have a bend in it. But before I can fix the problem, a big wahoo swims under me. The moment I've been waiting for, for years. How the fuck did I not hit that? Is that a wahoo? Yeah. Oh my God. How the fuck did I not hit that? Oh my God, I was right off. <laughs> I take my depression and swim back down to shoot some more fish to see what's wrong. And yep, I was right. Look at my shaft. It shoots high and takes a hard left. I try another fish. Boom! Shoots high, takes another hard left. What is happening? Oh my, look at the bend in that shaft flow. This is terrible. I'm just mad at this point. So you know what I do? I aim about a foot under the fish knowing that my shaft's shooting high, and guess what? Bullseye. I think I might have a bent, I might have a bent shaft, that's why I've been missing everything. I was like point blank on him, that's the only reason I got him. I missed like five, five other ones. Once again? Yeah, that dog snapper's nice. Got a couple of nice mangroves, got, got a, whatever it is, a Caribbean king crab. We got three lobsters in there. It was, I would say, a mixed bag. I've been giving you the wish. Now you want to stay tonight. We're in the kitchen and we got ourselves some crabs. Which brings me to today's theme. The kitchen theme. Butter, baby. Everything is mo' better with mo' butter. I got a pot full of water. It's heating up. We're gonna boil these crabs whole, but first things first. You wanna take yourself some of the South Florida Fishy Channel seasoning. Bayside, remember you can support the channel at SouthFloridaFishyChannel.com. Get yourself some merch, fishing rigs, seasonings. Make me feel better about that Wahoo that I lost and just flavor the water a bit, you know, add, an, add a nice zest of flavor in there. We'll bring that water to a boil. And in the meantime, let me tell you the tragic story of a bent shaft. Never spearfish with a bent shaft, especially when you've spent years trying to shoot a Wahoo and you finally get an opportunity and your bent shaft 
messes it all up. How did I not know that my shaft was bent? Let me explain. This kill shot spear gun is an enclosed track, which means your spear actually goes inside of an enclosed track. And normally, the dead giveaway that your shaft is bent is it won't fit inside that closed track. See, my shaft comes out easy, it goes in easy. So, didn't think much of it. My shaft is straight. It's going in fine, no problem. That was my first mistake. After I missed the first few fish, I should have known something was up. And you can't even see it. But my shaft is slightly bent just from here. Just in the top like eight inches, my shaft is slightly bent. Can't really see it with the naked eye unless you, unless you put it on a flat surface and you roll it. And then you notice, oh, it does have a little bit of a bend. It was probably from shooting that grouper that I battled. It must have somehow bent just the tip of my shaft, so you can't tell at all. But boy, does it throw my shots off. Tragically, the dozens of hours I've put into hunting Wahoo and I finally had an opportunity, my shaft unscrewed it up. I can only blame myself. Time to buy a new shaft. This is a Koa shaft, and it's been shooting amazing until... It got bent so doesn't matter how good your gun is doesn't matter how expensive your shaft is if it's got a bend in it it ain't gonna shoot straight let's take this moment of silence think about the mistakes that were made today and hit the like button i have one big goal right now and that is my spider crab the caribbean king crab some people were calling it i wanted to find out is it true that there's not that much meat inside of these guys is it worth only taking the claws and leaving the crab or is there a nice chunk of meat inside of them? I've never cooked one whole and I wanna find out. So the next time I'll know if I'm gonna keep the whole crab or just take, take his claws. Yeah, baby, that base side flavored water is boiling and now we'll add the man of the hour. What a face only a mother could love. Okay, timber. And then we will also put the slightly or pretty face in there. Oh, that, yeah, that's a pretty face. Yeah, boy. We'll bring it to a boil and we'll take the heat off a little bit and just kind of let it boil simmer. Rolling coal, boys and girls. It's been like 15 minutes. They're looking really good. He turned like pink almost. It's a pink. Got some melted butter here. And I think first things first, I wanna try this freaking claw right here. It looks delicious. Let's see if they just, how easily they pop out. Nope, oh, okay, that wasn't too bad. Oh, we see some meat in there. Let's give it a nice whack, shall we? I should probably cover this. Oh, juices flying everywhere. Put a towel on top of it. Completely obliterated the claw. My bad. There is a nice chunk of meat in there. Oh yeah. Look at all that meat in there. Oh, I don't even need to put butter on that. Try not to make a mess here, but. Mmm. I was making a mess inside, so I took this outside. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna eat this. I got my bucket, I can put all the shells in. There's a lot of meat inside, right in here, connected to the arm. I wonder if I can open him like a blue claw. Oh, I can. There's the head. So just like a blue claw, you remove the gills. Get rid of all those gills. Then you take these back legs, or first you break them in half. That's why I'm doing this outside. There's a lot of meat. Good chunk of meat. Wow, look at all that look at all that crab meat inside. There's also a ton of meat in the lobster. I want to wash them down because we got all the juice on them. 
So when you break open a crab, there's this like juice on it, which I guess is like a combination of like guts and poop and organs and some people call it the crab butter. In a blue claw, it's actually pretty delicious. In a lobster, it tastes okay. I don't mind it, but in the spider crab, you can see it all in there. It tastes a little funny. I'm not a huge fan of it. A bunch of it actually came out when I popped them open. So I'm gonna wash, I'm gonna wash it off. Yeah, see that. Look at all that meat in there. Lots of meat in there. There we go, I cleaned them up. Now it's looking real good, real appetizing. Look at all that meat in there. That's the lobster. There's a lot of extra meat in the legs. All that is meat. I get it, some of y'all are probably saying the crab butter is the best part of the crab. And I agree, in blue claws and crawfish, I love it. But I don't know, lobster and this crab, it tastes kind of funny in this crab, so. Call it what you will, but I'm gonna eat me some clean crab meat right now. If you got a big spider crab, there is a nice chunk of meat in there. Probably worth keeping the whole thing, especially if you're hungry. Bam! I just went ham town on this crab. I just ate so much. Here's my final review. So this is what one of the spider crab things looks like. I hollowed it out. There is a ton of meat in here. It eats very similar to a blue claw. When you pull the leg out of the, the main shell, a huge chunk of meat comes with it. The spider crab is better than the lobster. It really does kind of taste like a king crab or like Alaskan uh, snow crab. I'd say the snow crab is the, probably the most similar thing. Next spider crab I see is going in the cooler.